Hi, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell International. Today we're discussing stem cell therapy for spinal cord injury in Pakistan. So what I'm going to go through are the facts on spinal cord injury, what happens when you have an injury uh, to the spine, traditional treatments available, then we'll delve into the stem cell therapy, what the research shows, and we'll talk about the R3 Pakistan program, which is fantastic. All right, some facts. Spinal cord injury results from a mechanical injury to the spinal column. Worldwide, over 700,000 individuals sustain a spinal cord injury every year. Over half of these occur in the cervical region, and then you have 15% each for uh, thoracic, thoracolumbar, and lumbar. The average age of a spinal cord injury patient is 42. The economic studies show that after the first for the first year it's about 500,000 US dollars of cost for the treatment and then about 100,000 each year thereafter for patient care. There's various different causes. Uh, it could be a missile like a bullet, uh, distraction injury, uh, which is often a car accident or a sports injury, laceration, which could be a sword injury or a knife or something like that, a shear or impact compression, um, shear once again, automobile or um, uh, sports injury, impact compression is often from a fall. All right, what happens? The primary injury refers to the acute event. That's, you know, the car accident or sports injury or whatnot. And then the secondary injury occurs in the hours and days after that where the body um, undergoes a lot of ischemia, which is lack of oxygen, um, and lack of blood flow, anoxia, the, I got those backwards, inflammation, swelling, cell death, scar formation. Not much of that is very helpful, actually. Um, so it's a complicated process that the body um, undergoes with this secondary injury, not much of which is actually very helpful for healing. There's an accumulation of free radicals, electrolyte abnormalities occur, heart function goes down as opposed to going up, uh, with the result in blood pressure dropping, and blood vessels tend to spasm, which can reduce blood flow to areas that actually really need it for healing. So at the top, you see the primary injury mechanisms. We talked about that. And the secondary injury, um, which includes a lot of systemic effects, um, local vascular changes where the blood vessels spasm, electrolyte abnormalities, um, you get a lot of swelling known as edema, apoptosis means cell death, and then loss of neurotrophic factor, growth factor support. When you need it the most, it goes away. So I don't really understand that. Um, it's kind of a, an oxymoron type effect. Um, traditional treatments um, usually occur, first of all, in the ICU with stabilizing fluids, um, maintaining electrolytes, uh, maintaining blood pressure, um, you know, to, to because of all the vasospasm and things like that with the heart not functioning as well. High dose steroids, um, you know, there's various studies showing they're great. Others show they don't work so well. So it's a little bit equivocal as to whether or not they should be offered. Um, and then surgical stabilization may be necessary if there's been some kind of an unstable fracture or a dislocation. So let's start talking about stem cell therapy. Um, prior to this, there's really no effective biologic to help with spinal cord injury recovery. Uh, when you look at the spontaneous innate healing mechanisms that the body undergoes, such as activating stem, its own stem cells, remyelination, um, new neurons, it just hasn't resulted in significant functional improvements. It can help somewhat for the first six months, but it just isn't as much as you would, would hope for. The goal is to use stem cells for the spinal cord injury to achieve meaningful functional recovery with biologics that are safe and provide way more benefit than any risks. So this study I show not because of the outcome, uh, because it's for ALS and not for spinal cord injury, just because it's for intrathecal. So intrathecal is where most of the stem cells are administered for spinal cord injury. I wanted to show you that it's very safe procedure, basically a, a, a lumbar puncture. In this study, they used, uh, in 64 patients, two intrathecal injections um, of high cell counts, a million stem cells per kilogram. They didn't have any significant adverse events, and we haven't either. It's been a very safe procedure, very well tolerated um, as well. 
All right, so the goal with showing some research studies is not to show, not to promote an unrealistic miracle treatment. We want to show you potential outcomes that can be, you know, statistically significant. Um, and there's really going to be three different outcomes when a patient undergoes mm -hmm. stem cell therapy. One is a non-responder. I mean, even if you gave like a billion stem cells, some patients with spinal cord injury just aren't going to respond. What we often see is medium responder where you do get some functional improvement that's uh, very meaningful. And then you have some who are going to be super responders, which they take the biologics and just go nuts with it. It's fantastic to see. All right, so here's a study um, a few years back, clinical observation of umbilical cord stem cell in those who had thoracolumbar spinal cord injury, and it was a year out from the injury, right? So when you have um, treatment earlier, that's going to be better um, because the innate healing mechanisms really slow down after six months. So this was a year out, okay? They did 40 million stem cells transplanted intrathecal. They showed um, alleviation of muscle spasms and tension, um, increased limb strength, and improved ability to urinate. So compared to the rehab therapy in the control group, umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells did effectively improve neurological functional recovery um, in a meaningful fashion. Um, and you, if you look at the numbers here, you know, um, muscle tension went down, um, let's see, motion went up, um, sensation was improved. So that's good to see. Um, here's a study looking at 25 patients with traumatic spinal cord injury over six months ago. Um, an average age of 37, 20% were quadriplegic, 80% were paraplegic, and they got treated with 100 million umbilical cord blood stem cells, um, and they did both IV and intrathecal, which is what we do. And the results found that aut autonomic nerve functions were restored and the latent period of SSCPs was reduced. So if you look on the right side of the table up here, you can see that out of all the patients, um, they had 16% improvement in ASIA score, 28% had decreased spasms, a third had really good improvements in their autonomic function, 24% um, improvement in urinary function, and once again over a third improvement in SSCPs. So this was very good results, but it's also realistic, okay? Now, this is a uh, study on one patient, so it's a case report, a 37-year-old spinal cord injured female who had uh, umbilical cord blood um, and did very well, um, and this patient had um, the treatment within uh, 41 days, so Okay, so here's a one patient study called a case report. A 37 year old who um, had a spinal cord injury and within a few months after the injury had um, treatment with umbilical cord stem cells. They didn't say how much she was given, but within 41 days had improved sensory perception and movement in the hips and thighs. Um, and the CT and MRI results also showed regeneration of the cord at the injured site and some of the areas below it. So fantastic outcome in this, in this one patient. I would call that a super responder. This is the first patient in a Mayo Clinic study, um, a 53-year-old who was injured in a surfing accident who had a cervical spinal cord injury. Six months later, um, he was doing very well, actually, and, and then it just plateaued, right? Because after six months, the body just doesn't uh, do much uh, innately. Um, so in this study, they did 100 million adipose stem cells, intrathecal. Um, and as you can see on this next slide, this patient responded really, really, really well. The motor scores went up from like here, 19 to 25, 35 to 44 you know, in, in all the extremities, okay? And then the sensory also went up big time as well. So the Mayo Clinic is doing a 10-patient study. This was just the first patient, but that's a super responder. So I do want to mention that at our three international centers, we don't use embryonic stem cells. We also don't use induced pluripotent stem cells. Neither of those are ready for prime time use. So if anyone recommends those, 
run away because they can cause tumors, rejection, things like that. We use umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells, which are very safe. They don't lead to tumors. They don't cause a rejection. We don't have to do cross-matching or any of that. So I do like to point that out. Now let's talk about our program in Pakistan for spinal cord injury. We've combined all the essentials for a first-rate program. We have expert stem cell doctors, board certified by the American Board of Regenerative Medicine. We offer dedicated patient concierge representatives, safe biologics, very high cell counts. We know that cell counts matter and we have a very convenient location. Um, biologics culturing is allowed outside the U.S. This is called expansion. Our U.S. lab is accredited with a pristine safety record, CGMP compliant, ISO 7 certified. The quality assurance involved actually exceeds the FDA standards. We do keep the cell culturing to the fifth generation or less, which means they are highly pure and potent and active. We don't use preservative. Um, we have over 95% viability as a result. Um, and then it's only 20 minutes from the airport. Our transportation we provide uh, to the clinic and back is escorted and included. So depending on a patient's need, we offer several programs for spinal cord injury. And some of this will uh, come down to what, when was the injury, um, what are the deficits, what level, things like that. So for instance, we have a 100 million stem cell program um, which involves intrathecal and IV application. We also have a 200 million stem cell program, um, which is not one time, it's actually multiple days that we do that. Um, and there are other options too. I just didn't want to deluge this slide with that, uh, but we do customize it to what the patient needs. Um, to get the process started in uh, Pakistan, first I wanted to mention our medical director, Dr. Mohsen Navid. He's a longtime healthcare practitioner in Pakistan, very highly respected, very highly trained. He is board certified by, by the American Board of Regenerative Medicine. He's also a professor. Um, he's involved with the government, too, on the Human Organ Transplant Authority and the Drug Regulatory Authority. I mean, you can see his credentials there. They're second to none. So to start the process, uh, give us a call. Uh, you can call the U.S. prefix plus one, 888 988 0515. Uh, visit us online at r3stemcell.com slash Pakistan. Feel free to email us info at r3stemcell.com. We'll get back to you very quickly. Uh, we've been featured on every major media channel you can think of. Um, we were voted 10 best companies of the year, 10 most innovative companies of the year. Um, we were also voted recently USA's regenerative therapies leading service provider. So um, R3 Stem Cell International is, is an entity you can trust and we really want to work with you and help you and your loved ones. Thank you very much for watching.